Well, we did go to Andrews, what was that, a couple weeks ago now. <laughs> you know, we got the, we got the call that uh, on Friday, you know, Thursday or something that uh, you guys were expecting a storm. And kind of like you guys, you know, we, we've got a lot of storm before, it'll be okay. And uh, and then, anyway, we just about thought about, you know, taking off on Thursday night. But the good thing we did not we wouldn't have made it through Rapid City. Um, and then, so we stayed Friday anyway. Then we ended up having to stay Saturday and Sunday. We came home on Sunday night. Uh, and it is amazing because it was down, I'm down golfing. Uh, it, was, it was really nice down in Colorado. You know, it's so hard to imagine sometimes what what, uh, what something's like when you're when you're someplace else. And I think that's true of uh, our walk with the Lord. Sometimes uh, it's hard to imagine things are going to get better when you're in a tough place. Other times it's really hard to believe that it, you know, things can be that tough when you're sitting and really being blessed. But uh, again, we enjoyed Andrew's conference. Uh, some great friendships, uh, old ones, new ones. Uh, the man, uh, you know, in 2012, November, I went to Columbia, and of course, God really spoke to me there, and has been speaking to you guys about all that since then, but it was really awesome because that pastor and his wife showed up, and that was their first time to the conference, and I didn't know they were coming, and I turned around, and there they were, and uh, they didn't know I was there. It was just, it was really awesome, and, uh, you know, Wilson was here from Uganda, and uh, there's a guy named Herbert that's from Uganda that came uh, two years ago, and I started emailing him, and we started sharing, and uh, I'll just share this, and then I'm, I'm going to let Ale Alexis come, but uh, we'd shared some things on email about our past a little bit, but then Andrew was just talking about uh, some things and, and mentioned Herbert, and he said, you know, take uh, about remembrance, and he said, Herbert was four years old when Idi Amin's uh, army came into his house and shot all his family, and they shot everybody in the house. And Herbert was a four-year-old boy and on the ground, and they put a gun to his head, and the guy put his finger in the trigger and was going to shoot this little four-year-old boy when all of a sudden they heard a uh, pop outside, and they all ran. And that's Herbert, who uh, I've been communicating with, and, and I had no idea about that story. And I walked up to him afterwards, and I said, Herbert, I didn't know. And he says, you know something? I forgot about it. <laughs> he says, I mean, you know, I just, you're living for, he's serving the Lord as several hundred churches he's helped start. And uh, anyway, just the reality of what, what is really going on in the world today and what we're involved in and what we're partners with and Andrew, it's really phenomenal. So I'm going to ask Alexis to come and share, and then she's going to go serve in the nursery. We're so proud of her that she's a real major part of this body in every way. Alexis. It's so good to have her and she got to be at the conference. It was really a blessing. It was really fun to be at the conference. I was really glad to be there. When I got out of the conference was how to encourage yourself in every situation you are in. There's, and what they said and how they explained it was with David, he was being hunted by King Saul. And King Saul, well, he wasn't a very good guy at the moment. Oh well. So he was he could have had several situations where he could have been like, God, this is enough. I don't want this anymore. I'm just tired of this. I don't want to be king. He can just I'm done. I'm tired of this. He took my wife, he took my kids, I'm tired of this. And then there were several times when he could have killed Saul and he decided not to. And that's because God told him that's not how you're gonna get your kingdom. And how and he could have just quit. And if he could have quit, well, anyone can quit. But if he didn't quit, why do I get to quit? <laughs> and he blessed the Lord throughout that whole time. He never stopped blessing the Lord. Even when his men were about to kill him, stone him to death, he continued to praise the Lord. And I want to do that. And that's when I got out of the conference. Thank you, Alexis. Well, it was uh, awesome week. It's always a great week. And like Dad said, we get to go see lots of P 
people that we've known through the whole, all, like for many years, and so I get to see like Bobby and Lynn Crow, and that's always exciting to see them. But um, this conference was very different for me. One of the reasons was I took my kids, which is just, you know, as a mom, that's your brain split. So it was a little bit different, but um, so I was in and out of the conference, but it was an awesome time to spend with my boys and then to go and get the word and get refreshed. But um, I'm sure other people are going to share a little bit about this, but I'm going to touch on it real fast. Uh, Bob Nichols, he's a pastor that's been for 50 years, I think they said right? He's almost 50 years. Yeah. He's uh, been the pastor of a church in Fort Worth, Texas. And many of you may know about 10 years ago, this church got hit by a tornado and they wiped him out and all that stuff. Well, I've been listening to him since I moved to Mexico. We went to his church several times. I was just around him a lot. And, um, you know, as you are around people for long enough, you kind of start hearing the same stories. You start hearing the same things. <laughs> And so I'm not going to lie, I went into it with a pretty negative attitude of like, okay, here we go again. I could probably quote what he's about to say, but it was awesome to hear what he had to say. And he brought two young guys, one of them who I met 10 years ago, up and they spoke. And they spoke about going out and witnessing, which again, to be honest, I had a negative emotion about. And um, not because I'm opposed to witnessing by any means, but I think we can all have stories of where you went out and you were like, man, I know this person wants to receive the, you know, receive Christ or whatever, and you got shot down and you got burned. And so you, I have negative emotions about putting myself out there on the line, but it was so encouraging to hear these guys. And in the last year in their community in Fort Worth, Texas and Dallas area, they have witnessed to 40,000 people in one year. And they have said the prayer, 40,000 people. And, um, again, I'm sitting here listening to it and going, that's all great. We live in Sturgis, South Dakota with 6,000 people. Probably not going to have that great a result. And, but as I sat there, and they had two or three sessions. By the third session, I was so, had such a heart change. One of the things is, is having a boldness for the things of God. The Bible says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not. I'm not ashamed. Why would I hold back what I've been given? I've been given an amazing gift. Why would I hold that back from anyone else? And as I sat there and just let that kind of soak and let my heart kind of change, and you can ask Tammy because I kept elbowing her and saying things, but anyway. Um, I, but at, at the end of the week, I walked out totally motivated, I guess is what you could say. The Bible says that we are the light and the salt of the earth. I tell my Sela kids this every Wednesday. You are the light in your school. You are the light in this community. They know something's different about you. They know something's different about me. But what I, when I walked away this week, I thought, okay, I am a light in this world. People know something's different about me. I've got to start telling them why. I've got to open up my mouth. I've got to tell them why I'm different, why I have peace in the midst of unbelievable circumstances, what it is that makes me different. It's time for me to open my mouth. And I believe that um, what Pastor John and Elise have said from the beginning of this church, they've said, we are not here to play church. And I believe that that's why you guys are here, because you're not here to play church. You're here to grow. You're here to allow the things of God to change your life. You're here to become who God has asked and, and designed you to be. And I believe that inside of each one of us, we can get very, very complacent. We can get very uh, negative. But inside each one of us, there is a motivation to get the gospel out. And I believe that in the months to come, we're going to see a big change in this body of Christ, of boldness for the things of God. You're not here to play church. I'm not here to play church. I'm not here to get another check on my list of I made it to church how many times this year. I am here for the things of God, and I believe that you are too. And I believe that in the months and the years to come, we are going to be bold and change the city. And no, maybe we won't have 40,000 people, but we'll have that neighbor that lived down the street that we've been praying for for many, many years come to know Christ. We'll have family members who we've prayed for many, many years come to know Christ. We'll have husbands and wives and children come to know Christ. And so I'm calling out into your inner man. That's another thing they said. This guy said when he witnesses, he doesn't talk. He doesn't really allow them to give a lot of like 
you know, boring answers because he said that's their mind putting up the defense. He's talking to their heart and to their soul because every single person, this was huge for me, every single person out there in this world, they want, their inner man wants the things of God. Their soul, their heart is crying out for things of God. Their flesh may put up a wall, but their inner man is crying out for the things of God, and that's who we need to speak to. Even when the earth, the Fleshly emotions may show something different. We're speaking to that inner man, and I'm speaking to your inner man, and I believe that there's a boldness inside every one of us for the things of God and to get this gospel out. And so I encourage you that when you have those opportunities, don't let fear. I've let fear hold me back. Don't let fear hold you back. And, man, we have people who want the things of God. We need to get it to them. Hi. I'm Rachel Milken. I've been working here at the school for three years, and I've been going to Andrew Womack for three years. Um, like Jody said, this is a year that was different than all others because I've only been there for three years, and she's been there for like 10. And she's heard the same stories. I've heard the same stories. Like I could quote anything he said. So Bob Nichols was getting up, and he said, I want my two people from the congregation to come up and talk to you. Well, this is weird. He talks a lot. Okay, but not going on everything that Jody said. Um, when you're going out on the streets and you're talking to people and they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the gospel. That was huge for me. Is, I don't go out and I don't talk to people. I don't open up. This is me. This is what I am. If you want to know me, come talk to me. But... I won't get in my heart. So when they said that, it was huge. Okay, off topic. Best conference ever because I got a golf with Pastor John. We didn't get first, but we didn't get last. So that's huge, too. Um, I wrote down some notes. We played a four-person scramble. Don't, if you don't know what that is, it's basically best ball. Everybody drives off the tee. Everybody goes to the best ball that's the farthest, the best lie, in the middle of the green, whatever. It was awesome. I could make a huge mess up. I could still rely on three other people. One has never played before, and the other hasn't played in like 10 years. So it really is just John and I pushing, <laughs> pushing the ball. Um, Andrew Womack has amazing a few sentences. He'll just throw out a couple sentences, chew on that, think about it, what comes out of it. One was, a dead fish floats downstream. You got to work to get up to the top. So it's just like us. We got to work to get our, our body of Christ where we want it to go. Does that make sense? Um, one other one, but I have to find it. I put a star next to it. And this is actually the most I've taken notes at this conference. That's why it's taken forever. Okay, don't focus on the fence. Look beyond the fence and see what God has for you. That's all. Chew on that. Rachel and I knew we were, we had, uh, one, one of the guys showed up for our foursome, and uh, so that meant we were short one. So that meant one of us could shoot twice on every hole, so we were thinking, hey, that's going to be pretty good, man. Well, so we get to the first hole, and we, we uh, get there on the green, and this kid shows up finally. He says, sorry I'm late, and he puts his uh, uh, clubs in the cart. And I said, no problem, it's, uh, you can putt, just grab your putter. He says, I've never golfed before, what's a putter? Which one's the putter? And Rachel and I looked at each other and said, Oh, <laughs> we'd raise, we'd ra anyway. So it turned out to be kind of a teaching time. I thought the kid had a lot of guts uh, to go to a tournament and, and never know what a putter was. But we came out pretty good. We got plans for next year, don't we? Yep. All right, Tammy, would you come? <clears throat> good morning. <laughs> Rachel and I drove in a car for a long time. You'd be nice. 
I got stuck with this lady. <laughs> for <Stuck>. all week. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> and it was the best week of your life. Come on. We bonded in ways that you'll never know. Um, <laughs> it was a great week. I'll leave you hanging. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out where to go. You know, um, one of the, there's a few things uh, um, that one of the things is, well, you know, like Pastor John said, you know, here we are in Colorado, and 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 this storm is going on out here, and you know, and that's that's the way it is all the time in the kingdom of God. You know, in one person's experiencing abundance, the other person's experiencing lack. You know, one person's experiencing revelation, the other person's experiencing darkness. And what I've always strived to do is try to figure out what is the Holy Spirit doing because I want to do what the Holy Spirit is doing. I want to join with him. I want to work with him because that's where I'm going to get the return for my investment. That's where I'm going to be the most productive. And and if you know me, I'm very task-oriented. I want to get the job done. I want to get the job done fast, and I want to get the job done right. I mean, it's just like, let's just get it done. So whatever he's doing is what I want to be doing. And so while we're in Colorado... You know, the teens are meeting on Wednesday night, and um, Jenna's, you know, ministering to them, and I just, you know, give Jenna a hug and a thank you, because I so, 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 so appreciate her support and her friendship in the teen ministry. I, I hate doing things alone. I hate, I, I, I hate trying to make decisions by myself. I love to have a partner, and she's been my partner for a really long time, and I can't tell you what it means just simply to have her there. And she met with the teens on Wednesday night, and they're talking about, as a group, what they want to do for this school year. You know, what are we going to do? What are we going to shoot for? Well, one of those goals was to run a minute or a mile in six minutes and 37 seconds. Well, that ain't happening. But anyway, the other goal that they had was is that they wanted to, to be more conscious about encouraging themselves and how to encourage others. And then one of the other goals that they had was is that they thought maybe they should share what they have going on Wednesday nights by inviting a friend to come on Wednesday nights. Now, how cool is that? Because one of the major messages while we were at the conference was how to encourage yourself in the Lord. And uh, Alexis touched on that, how, you know, David he lost everything, and, and to up until that time, he really hadn't done anything wrong. He was just trying to serve. He was a shepherd boy taking care of the sheep. God called him out, anointed him, said, this is what you're going to do. Took him out of his environment, threw him into this, you know, ministry that he really didn't really have a desire for, didn't even know that he wanted, didn't anything, and God threw him in there, and it's just like from thing, thing after thing after thing went wrong, but there's one verse in the Bible and we all take it and we hang on to it. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself. And oh my goodness gracious, if one thing, Alexis and I are both on the same page, it's like we have got to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We've got to learn to go to the Lord and let the Lord pour into us in our, in, in our alone time, not just here, but in our alone time. We've got to learn to how to encourage ourselves. Let him encourage us. Let him tell us who we are. Let him explain to us the vision. The scripture verse for our Wednesday night for this year, Psalms 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight means pliable, means palatable, be moldable, be able to conform to him, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, everybody thinks, well, I want this and I want that. No, no, no. What you want is God's kingdom in your life. What you want is his will to be done. What Jody was saying, he, she's calling out to your inner man. That was so good. She's speaking to your inner man because apart from everything that you see, apart from everything that you feel, apart from everything that you think is going to bring satisfaction, your inner man is crying out, dear God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in my life first. 
That's what's coming out of you. That's what's in you. Okay, second example, the Holy Spirit. You know, this storm is going on, and I'm like, God, you know, I want to help. I really, really do. I want to work. I want to do something. So when John and Lisa gave the suggestion about picking up sticks, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do something. And I have such a a heart for the elderly because it's just been so... um, uh, magnified, you know, their loneliness, their helplessness, and what it is to live in a home. We have a lot of people that are in their 80s in this community that are living in their homes alone. And, you know, and I know what it is to try to upkeep a house. I mean, it, it's like seriously overwhelming to try to maintain a house. Not only is it expensive, but nine times out of ten, I don't even know what the heck to do. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, how do I do this? And then all these elderly, you know, I'm at least still somewhat young and physically strong enough to do some things. So I was crying out to the Lord. Well, yesterday, I'm having my little quiet time with the Lord, you know, going through my notes, trying to get ready for today. And then I get this phone call. And they're like, first thing out of their mouth, who is this? I'm like, well, who is this? Well, this is the police department. I'm like, okay, this is the police department. All right, so, and she goes, well, who is this? I said, I'm still not telling you who I am until you tell me why you're calling me from the police department. And I'm like, what the heck? So anyway, she goes, well, are you Tammy Iverson? I said, yes, I am Tammy Iverson. Is this your phone number? Yes, this is my phone number. And she goes, well, we got your phone number from Linz County Market. I'm like, really? (laughs) So why did you get my phone number from Linz County Market? Well, there happens to be this gentleman who lives in our community and he's 80 some years old and he can't get his groceries and he's in a wheelchair and he can't get his cigars and can't get his groceries can't get his stuff and so um and he and i said he called the police department she says yeah oh they call the police department all the time he has called the police department a lot so and i'm thinking okay all right fine um we'll get him a food voucher and i just was gonna you know, transfer him over to somebody I knew that could get him a voucher and get him some food and whatever else. She goes, no, 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 you don't understand. He needs food, and he needs it now. And I'm like, well, why are you calling me? Then, ta-da, this little voice, the Holy Spirit says, Tammy, didn't you pray that you could be a help? And I'm like, oh, okay. I said, oh, okay, I got this. I got this. I can do this. I, I, I can get those groceries for you. She goes, oh, that would be great. Click, you know, gave me the address and left me hanging. So I'm like, okay. So um, I told Alexis, we're going to this house on Main Street, all right? And you're coming with me because I'm not going in alone. (laughs) I said, I'm not doing this alone. I don't want to go. I said, I don't care that you don't want to go. I said, you're going (laughs) because I'm not going in this house alone. So we go down there yesterday afternoon, (laughs) and we knock on the door, and he's got it locked. And oh my goodness gracious, is he a grouchy little man? He was like, rawr, 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 who are you? I'm thinking, who am I? My name is Tammy Iverson. Who's Tammy Iverson? I'm like, well, the police department called me in. So then, then, I, so then I thought, well, I'll hide behind the Alliance of Churches. I'm with the Alliance of Churches. Well, no, really, I'm with Believer's Fellowship. But I kind of hang out with the Alliance once in a while. So I was trying to explain this. Well, anyway, after being, and then he says to me, I told him, I said, well, we're here to get your groceries. You know, we want to help you out with your groceries. And, um, and he kind of gave me that look, and he goes, are you going to do my dishes? And I'm like... <laughs> You have got to be kidding me. I said, no, I'm not doing your dishes. I'm going to get you your groceries. That's what I'm doing. And so then it, was, it was, must have been a God thing because in all reality, I probably, any other time I would have said, yes, I'll do your dishes. I'll do your laundry. I'll scrub your floor, whatever you want. But um, don't pass that around, but there's a lot of truth to it. But um, anyway, so it must have been a God thing because he just got this smell on his face. He goes, oh. he goes I can do the dishes. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so anyway, so then we, we, I explained to him, you know, that I'm going to go get his groceries and I'll bring them back and what have you. And so, um, and, and he knew that I was with the church, all right? So he gives me the check and I go out the door. Well, the neighbors come over and like, what are you doing? Rah, rah. I said, well, the guy needs us. We brought him groceries yesterday. We brought him. They told me all these things that he did. I said, well, maybe, maybe he just wanted to see a different face. <laughs> I said, maybe he just wanted to see somebody come in and see 
him and say hi. Maybe that's all he wanted. Maybe he doesn't need cigars. Maybe he doesn't need groceries, whatever. So anyway, well, during that conversation with him, he told me how he didn't have any time for the church, couldn't get to the church anyway, da 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 all these different things. So Alexis and I, we go get the groceries, we come back, and um, prior to that, he had been listening to the news on the television, right? So he'd been, you know, doing the television thing and whatever. So we get back, and we knock on the door. The TV's off. It's completely silent, except for this old gospel song. And it says, Jesus is calling. I don't know how it goes. Rachel could probably sing it because <laughs> she knows all the words. The Jesus is calling, 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 come home. Jesus is calling. I thought, oh, my gosh. And I thought, you know, we came in and we gave him the groceries. His you know, countenance was completely different. And I thought, God, you know, you can believe what you want. But I believe that wherever I go, the presence of the Spirit of God goes. And that wherever I go, and no matter what I do, I'm always going to make a difference. And when I walked in that house, the Spirit of God went with me. And whatever was in me called out to that man. And when I left, the Spirit of God stayed and ministered to that man and told him to put on that song and say, Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Calling, please come home. And then he said to me, he goes, well, aren't you going to stay? <laughs> and I was getting ready for a concert last night with some of my other um, students, and I said, I can't stay. I said, I have to go. But I did tell him. I said, you know what? You haven't seen the last of me. I said, I'll be back. And guys, you know, this thing about sharing what is inside of you, it's not a hard thing. Just be who you are. Be the child of God that you were created to be. And make sure that when you go out, that you've taken the time to get filled up. Because it's really hard to go out into a world that is so struggling and hurting so bad when you haven't got that deposit. And you've got it inside of you, but you need to be reminded that you are are a child of God, created in the image and likeness of God. He has equipped you, given you the strength, the grace, the wisdom for whatever comes before you. He has provided a way for you. But people need to hear that. They need to see it in you, and they need to hear it from you. And if not us, then who? You know, David had all hell break loose, and he had done nothing wrong. But he took the time, and he stirred himself up in the Lord. And as he stirred himself, then he went to the Lord and said, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord says, go and be victorious. And this is the same for us. Pull back. Get filled up. Get reminded of who you are. Get your directions from the Lord. And then go and be victorious. Amen. Uh, I, uh, as life goes on, you have a lot of dreams and have a lot of aspirations when you're young. I did. I was called the dreamer. You stretch out there, and some of them come to pass, and uh, some of them don't. And then you grow old, and you get to where you don't quite have the energy you had when you're younger. But like uh, I've already been said, it's like, but that inner man stays strong. That inner man, that guy down inside has desires, has dreams, has, has a real, like Jody said, it's everybody's inner man wants to know God. Uh, that's, it's the destination. That's the purpose that it was created. So no matter who you're witnessing to, whomever you're, whoever you're talking to, sometimes it's good just to stop. You know, you, you know, let's be honest. A lot of times people are talking, you're not listening to them anyway, right? You know, you're thinking about something else, and sometimes you get halfway through the conversation and go, boy, I, I better pay attention. I might have to have an answer here, uh, you know. So since you do it anyway, I'm just going to encourage you. Once in a while, just stop and, and uh, just say to yourself, God, what's this person's inner man going through? 
just to ask God to help me be aware of what's really going on inside this person instead of what looks like on the outside. Because a lot of what we can do in being bolder isn't always what we think. It's, as Tammy said, just being yourself. And, but being aware of, of uh, and saying it in a, in a whole different way of just encouraging that inner man in people. You know, I was uh, in a restaurant <clears throat> this week, and I just turned to Elise and I said, you know, maybe it's the water in South Dakota and Sturgis, but people are really getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, going to the conference, people are getting older. They're all getting older. And we went, you know, we started 20 years ago up in Buena Vista when there's just 120 of us and we got to know each other. We had some wonderful stories there. One thing Andrew ministered on is one of the ways you, you encourage yourself is to put yourself in remembrance of the good things that God has done. And I personally will be sharing more and more, uh, just little tidbits through the next serv- through the services. Uh, I, I never wanted to be a church that always talked about the past. I was with some churches in my early days where the people got up and said, in 1940, we had a move of God. And I thought to myself, I don't want to do that. I want to have a move of God. You know, I want to know God every day. I don't want to talk about something 20 years ago. But where I failed in that is you do need to remind yourself of what God has done to encourage yourself. You got to look back and say, oh, my gosh, he has been faithful, hasn't he? There have been some great things. I look at Larry Wallace in, in, uh, in his younger days, and because and, we actually knew a lot of the same people. We didn't know each other, but we knew a lot of the same people. And uh, every time he walks through the doors, and every time I think about him, I'm just blown away. Because uh, knowing all his friends, all my friends, we were all crazy, and there's every reason in the world for us not to be alive today. And we have a lot of our mutual friends that are dead. And it just blesses me to see Larry being faithful, loving God. Um, and I look around this room and I think of, and I think about our beginnings, you know, um, when we came to Sturgis in 1983 or so, um, I told God, okay, he, he told me, he said, I want you to start a church in Sturgis. I said, I don't want to. <laughs> I went to school here. It's a, it's a town that says us four and no more. I don't want to. And he says, well, okay. Well, you know, when somebody doesn't force you and manipulate you, they really twist you. Because it's like you're ready for the rebuttal. You're ready for the fight. And they said, okay. And God said, okay. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I came around and said, is that really what you want me to do? And he says, yeah. Well, I said, then we'll do it. I want to please you. But when we came, you know, we, we, <clears throat> we started in a little glass shop called Sturgis Glass. Now, can you imagine this? It, we just, uh, Ray Raposa had remodeled a little bitty room in the front. Wanted to serve the Lord. He'd been coming to our church in, in uh, Vail. And, but the kids to get to children's church had to walk through the glass shop and then all across the street into this other little shed. And in the wintertime, they had just a little wood stove there. And Lisa, would, she was pregnant, and she'd huddle all the kids together and take them through the glass shop. Now, and this wasn't really a neat glass shop either. There's glass everywhere. It's like a danger zone, man. I mean, kids are always reaching up, grabbing. I mean, we had more opportunities for somebody to get slit you know, and, uh, and then she got over there, and there was no restroom over there. And I thought it was the funniest thing. A little kid would say, i got to go to the bathroom. And Lisa said, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Because she couldn't take one little kid and go back to the little bathroom we had over there and leave all the rest because it was right next to the highway. And they get out on the street. You know, she just said, you don't have to go. And they didn't. <laughs> well, sometimes they did. <laughs> And, and then she had to start a fire, and I started fires, and that was our beginning. And there was a lot of people that just said, uh, I found out later, there was a lot of other pastors that said, oh, 
He's just like a lot of guys. They'll come in. They won't last. And some guy got back to me. Well, he's not going to make it. I go, well, that's great. Then I don't have to do this. I didn't have anything to prove. I didn't have anything I wanted to do. I just wanted to serve the Lord. And at least and I just gave it all we had. And then others came. And I said, one of the things I didn't want to have happen was some churches split and have all our people come from a church split. So what we did was uh, we did a three-day seminar on how to hear the voice of God and just to kind of test the waters. And then out of that announced that we'd start. And uh, you know who showed up the first Sunday? Molars, Tiffany Oliver, and a bunch of people that just left a church split. And I said, this is exactly what I said we were going to do, God. You know, but he just said, will you just love the people I bring to you? And there are some people that came that really didn't have the greatest reputations in the community. And when people come into their business, they would say that some of the rudest things or some of the most, you know, things that I would ne- you know, want, want them to say about Jesus, just challenge people. And I finally said, you know, we need, God, we need, some of these people are really hindering your kingdom. We kind of need to, pr- should I pray them out? <laughs> <laughs> or can I give you my takeout list? You ever get a takeout list, you know? And God just said, uh, once again, will you just pastor the people I bring to you? And forget about your reputation. And forget about what it looks like to me. He said, by the way, nobody can really do me harm. You ever hear people say, well, that's your giving God a bad name? He's not worried about it. He's very secure in who he is. I mean, the first days of the healing movements, you know, it's like, well, people do some silly things. Oh, that's really giving God's healing movement a bad name. And I thought, that's like a little baby coming up and hitting me in the knee and thinking they're going to take me out. ain't going to happen. And those are the early days of what God established in us, of just loving one another and not trying to be uh, something. And then when we started, you know, we were trying to figure out, find a building. I'll never forget, we started this building. Dwayne Grins was with me at the time. And after we started it, it was a big challenge because nobody wanted to, nobody had loaned us money. And we did a, a church bond. But I remember Dwayne walked up. We just started the foundation. He said, you know, John, no independent church in the Black Hills has ever made it through a building program. <laughs> yeah, I go, now why would you bring that up now? Well, I just want you to know nobody's ever made it. He said, there have been so many independent churches that tried to build a building and every one of them collapsed and failed. You know, sometimes the people around you aren't much encouragement. You know, but that actually encouraged me. Because I said, that's good, Dwayne, because I said, I have nothing to prove here. If this goes down, it goes down. I'm just, I'm just doing my best to obey God. In the meantime, let's love the people. And let's don't worry about our reputation. And uh, we tried to, we were going to sell those church bonds. And Cliff Lynn went out and talked to some of his friends. And he said, he just told him, says, you are not going to make it. Nobody's going to buy your bonds. Nobody wants to invest in that crazy church. That was some of the better noted people in the community. And he came back to me and he, he gave me the report. And, and what Tammy is saying, you know, and, and Alexis, you can take anything and, and you could either say it's going to discourage you or it can encourage you. You know, when they brought back those reports, it encouraged me. I said, well, good. If it happens, then it's really awesome. <laughs> then God really is with us. If it doesn't happen, whew, we just missed another bullet. And it was a storm. We got ready to sell those church bonds and uh, go in the community. And the very night we started, Lila, remember that? We had a blizzard for a week. I think it was in November, if I remember right. I mean, it just snowed and blizzard for a week. And uh, you couldn't hardly get around. But, we, you know, uh, by the end of the week, we had $125,000 worth of bonds we were going to sell. And we decided not to sell $12,000 worth until later because we might not need them. And at the end of the week, we had $100,000 worth of bonds sold in a blizzard. It was just like, I've talked to more people since then. They said, oh, we did a church bomb, a bond thing. It was the worst thing we've ever done. 
I said, man, we sailed through this. And in the midst of that, God spoke to me very clearly and said, money will not be an issue. And by the way, the, the building that we built here, the land cost 35000 if I remember right. 17 acres here. And uh, that's another neat story. But uh, we bought the land and built this building for a little over $100,000 and put new chairs in it. And being honest, I told my friend Bill Reed, he'd moved to California, he'd lived here all, all his life, and I told him that. He was a contractor out there. <laughs> and he finally came and saw the building like five years later, and he said, John, I was expecting a tar paper shack. You can't build anything for less than $20 a square foot. We did. We did. In the middle of winter, we did. I'm just telling you, God has been good to us. And where am I at today? I'm in the same place I was 30 years ago. I'm just saying, we got nothing to prove. Not really worried about what the community thinks of us, because one thing, I don't really know what they think of us. And you don't really know what people think of you. But you worry about it an awful lot. But if you and I could just stop and say, God, how do you see us? We'd start finding out the truth. Because how God sees you is truth. And he sees you as a joint heir with him, even if you are in a major screw-up right now, even if the major screw-up is your fault. He sees you as one who has the mind of Christ, who has the Spirit of God inside of him, who's going to rule and reign with him forever. And yeah, he knows that you're stumbling, but he also knows your destiny. In the millions of years to come, you will not be a screw up. <laughs> now, isn't that kind of good news? Because, frankly, the last 30 years of my life are pretty... Frank, I mean, God's done some great things, but personally... Gosh, I've made some blunders. That's enough time thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but he loves me. He loves you. And he loves the people that are out in your life and my life, and they don't have to come here. That's not a requirement for God to love them or for you to love them. Isn't that wonderful? But it's already been said. When I prayed uh, leaving Columbia that I'd be ten times bolder, I knew this, that if I prayed that for me, it was going to hit you. Because we're partners. And I really did. I, I had all kinds of encouragement. I think I told you that. I, had, I said to only a few people coming back, and uh, I, you know, one was Dwayne Arson, one was some other, other guys that know me pretty well. I said, you know, Strong spiritual leaders. I said, I just prayed that I'd become ten times bolder. And every one of them said the same thing, almost verbatim, close to it. said, John, you're already bold. And it was almost like saying, don't do that. Don't do that. That could be disaster. <laughs> and the more they said that, the more encouraged it was. My gosh, we have been, we, you know, and... I just want to tell you that I've already seen it start happening, but as Tammy said, and Jody said, and Alexa said, and Rachel said, and everybody else is saying, and you're saying inside, our days are sweet ahead of us. In the midst of a lot of groaning, cracking, snapping, you know, Nathan, uh, he heard a groan in his trees, and then he heard a snap, and then the house shook. He thought maybe it was lightning and thunder. But it was a tree. And it fell from about 20 to 30 feet up, about this big around. It snapped off, and then 30 feet of it came down a long ways. It didn't just tip onto it. It came flying down. Landed right in the middle of it and balanced on his roof. And when you step out and see that a tree's on your house, and you heard that snap, and then you feel it shake, and then you get to thinking, wow, that's not, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a blow. And he said he got back in the house and heard another one snap. And he said he ran for the basement. <laughs> He'll scare the pudding out of you. 
And there's a tree right beside, but that one didn't hit the house. Things are going to, storms are going to hit our house, folks. Storms are going to hit. But if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus and keep believing, take it as an adventure and enjoy the journey, we'll get to see the glory of God all our life until we breathe our last. We got nothing to prove. But we know him. Right? We know him. He knows us. For that reason, it's going to be okay. In the meantime, this little church has blessed untold countless people all around the world. And I really don't understand it, honestly. But we go to the conference and there's so many people that just want to be with us. I don't, as Tammy said, you carry the Spirit of God. And there's just, uh, there just people that just want to be with us. That's enough. Let's just be with them. Let's don't feel the pressure. Let's just enjoy our life. Would you stand with me, please? You can't fix anybody. But don't underestimate the value of your presence. And there's a lot of people besides the one that Tammy saw that just need a friend. You say, well, I don't know if I'll say the right thing. And one thing I want to say, is there isn't much right you can say. They shared a lot with what people shared with them, and some of it really hurt them and offended them, whatever else. And finally at the end, I said, you know, guys, this is what I do. And you're scaring me because you're pretty hard on some people about what they shared. And I said, frankly, it's hard to know what to share. For a lot of things. But then I got to share with them. Some of the experiences I've had. Holding people's hands. As they breathe their last. And feeling their presence. Go into the presence of God. I got to share about Myrna. (laughs) And how. I felt that big angel come behind me. And asked him, I said, what are you here for, to take Myrna? He says, no, I'm here to repair the way of the Lord. And I, I don't see it with my eyes, but I can, I can see that guy to this day, man. He just decked out, man. He was decked out. Angels are not some sissy little babies with wings. This guy was like an officer that you didn't really want to cry. I mean, he intimidated me. And pretty soon I saw angels from him all the way up on both sides making a path. And within two minutes, all of a sudden I knew that Jesus was behind me with Myrna in his arms. And I turned to look there because I didn't see with these eyes, but I wanted to turn because I knew they were there. And I saw Jesus holding Myrna in such a grip that it was just awesome. Now, my, a lot of you know that story. Some, I shared that story with them and shared, you know, and some other things. By the time, they were encouraged. And one thing Charlie said to me a couple nights later, we were talking about remembrance. And he said, you know, about five years ago, his son was at the conference. And his son had wandered off from the Lord a little bit and come back. He was a drummer. And he was drumming for the conference. And they had a time when they went out and just prayed for people. And Charlie went over and prayed for, you know, the older people praying for the younger ones. And he prayed for his own son. That was before he knew he had cancer and all that. But Charlie was going through something with his oldest daughter. And after he prayed for his son, then Bob Nichols said, Now, kids, pray for the person that prayed for you. So Charlie's son, Bo, who died, prayed for Charlie. And Charlie and I sat there a couple meetings after we'd had our discussion. And all of a sudden he says, John, I was right there. I just remembered. I just remembered. You can forget things. So I just remembered that Bo prayed for me right there. And I said, what did he pray? He said, Bo turned to me with energy and just said, Dad, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Don't be afraid. Man, I began to weep. And Charlie began to weep. I said, dear God, Charlie, what a thing to remember. Because Bo is up in heaven now, and what do you think he's saying to you now? More than ever before, he's saying, come on, Dad! Come on, Dad! I know what it's like.
back on the other side. Come on, Dad, finish your race. Don't be afraid. I said, man, with that image, what a, what a different image than, oh, you know. And we wept together, and we cried, and we coveted together to remind each other so that we can finish. This morning, you know, when I saw Myrna go, I saw Jesus. He looked at me for a second. Myrna looked at me. They both said thank you, which I'll never, ever, ever release the joy that that brings to me the connection I feel with him and then I saw him look to that big angel because he was done with me because he's got his girl in his arms and they're going to go be together but he turned to that big angel that one that kind of intimidated me and he said whatever he wants get it for him (laughs) he was talking about me so whatever John wants, get it, get it for him. I'm so grateful. But this morning I was praying again. And I said, God, how do you see me? How do you see me? And he said, son, I see you like that angel. That I can turn to you at any time and ask you to get something done. And you'll do it. That's pretty awesome. And that's how God sees this body. All he's got to do is turn to us and whisper. Will you guys take care of this and we'll do it. Amen. That's us. That's all we got to do. Father, we bless you. And we open up our hearts to hear from Bo and from Aubrey. Rich, Myrna, Eric, Max, Esther, and the list is getting longer. And we open up our hearts and let ourselves hear and see them from heaven calm down to us and saying, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Go, go. Go, finish. Finish what he's given to you with joy and in peace. Believe because it's true. And Father, with that encouragement, we walk out these doors today. Encouraged in the Lord. And we thank you. And we bless you. And we praise you. That our names are written down, never to be blotted out. Charge us up. Release us to be free. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hug somebody before you leave.